how is the business doing in China? What are sales looking like? Hello, Tom. Uh, thank you very much for this uh, first question. Business is looking good. I have to say that uh, since the outbreak here in China, we managed to uh, come back to work quite fast and recover our sales uh, starting the first quarter. And we published lately our nine months and we are going at plus 20. So the appetite for beauty in China is still uh, at the high level. Plus 20% on 2019 levels of sales? Yes, for the first nine months of the year. For the first nine months of the year. What are the key drivers of that demand here in China? So first of all, I think uh, beauty is part of the routine of the consumers, and particularly the skincare, which is the biggest category in China, stayed very much uh, active during this uh, whole time. And we see more and more consumers having more sophisticated routine, looking at more product efficacy, big brand that they trust, and we've seen this upgrade in terms of consumption continuing. So of course, as a company like L'Oreal, with our brand portfolio offering you know, high quality products, safe products for the consumers, this demand was uh, very strong and stay very strong for, the, for this year. Okay, just unpack that a little bit for us. What are those changing consumer demands that you're seeing here? Yeah, we've seen this year there is some uh, changes in the consumers in terms of being more meaningful in terms of consumption. So they ask now their question, uh, why I'm buying this and what I'm buying? This is where safety and quality uh, become very important. Trusting big brands become also very important. And we've seen these big brands actually growing even faster. The second thing that we've seen is uh, this desire for more personalization. You know, consumers want to understand more what they're buying and how they're using them. And this is where digital is a perfect match to beauty, because digital live stream allowed these consumers to be more knowledgeable and to know more how to use this product with recommendation. And last but not least, I think it's a very important point we've seen in this period, the awareness of sustainability become very high in the mind of the consumers, particularly the young ones. And this is where this good consumption is not just about me, it's how I can also be part of a better ecosystem for the future. And we have the role to play as L'Oreal, not only us, with all the ecosystem to contribute to this good consumption. Okay, so those are some of the trends that you're seeing on the ground. I just want to zoom out a little bit and talk about the macroeconomic picture here in China. The economy is recovering it seems maybe 2% growth this year but there is a question mark over the health of the Chinese consumer you've talked about plus 20% growth for the first nine months of the year that's obviously impressive are there any areas of concern for you when it comes to China's consumer particularly when we've seen job losses and wages under pressure so you know we have today uh, a coverage I mean for, from a L'Oreal perspective we, we service a big number of consumers and we're, we're servicing in big cities and, and, and uh, sm smaller cities and uh, new cities we didn't uh, today witness a, a downgrade in terms of consumption uh, as I said uh, what I believe today is that consumers are more uh, buying probably less but buying more smarter and buying better so and I think this is uh, some uh, some uh, advantage I would say to the big brands and to the brands that they offer the quality and the safety uh, to the market. So we are quite confident, to be uh, honest, on the beauty market because we've seen that beauty was very resilient. So even though that other uh, category took time to recover, beauty recovered as a, as a market since even the second quarter of the year. So this is uh, the why I think in our industry we are quite confident uh, on, the, on, the, on this year and the year to come. You, you were telling me earlier, off camera, you have market share of around 12 or 30 percent here in China. You're the market leader. Do you hold on to that market share? amid increasing competition yeah I mean the competition is uh, of course uh, is a healthy one because it's always uh, stimulate the leader to be even better but the name of the game is innovation as well you know we are we have big brands uh, but also consumers expect innovation this is why we have a unique innovation system we have uh, labs here in China that we develop for China and also we develop uh, also some uh, product innovation that travel from China to the world and same things you know we get also the best of the world to China and this community Combination is actually uh, giving us a lot of uh, uh, hope uh, and a lot of uh, you know strengths to keep our leadership position in this market. Okay, some analysts have said that some of the local startups have been better at adjusting and adapting to, for example, the coronavirus. They've been quicker to do that than some of the bigger brands, maybe like yours. Are you seeing that? 
Uh, it's true that uh, the name of the game is to adapt fast, and I have to say in L'Oréal, you know, we are very entrepreneur. We have a big size of big leader, but we still have the mindset of a startup. So we've been also adapting very fast, I have to say, uh, because even the first quarter, we've been positive in China. Even though the, the market was negative, we adapt very fast. We've been very pioneer in our digital transformation here in China. So we adapted solution to keep uh, servicing our consumers and online, uh, uh, but also with O plus O solutions. And I think this is the, 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 I would say, the name of the game, you know, adapt fast and answer consumer expectation and needs. Okay, switching focus slightly, we are in the midst of the US election. We still don't know who is going to be victorious, whether it's going to be another four years of Trump or Biden in the White House. Do you have a view on how US relations with China and China's relations with other countries in the world unfold on the back of whoever takes office? I mean, it's, uh, as you said, we don't know yet, and it's probably a bit uh, difficult to project. But what, what I've seen, at least from a, from a L'Oreal perspective, is that, uh, you know, the China showed a lot of openness in the past uh, 23 years that we've been here. And we've seen it from a business perspective. We managed really to grow. We managed also to have a lot of facilities to introduce more brands faster to the market. And this is key for the beauty industry, to launch products, to innovate. And we've seen today that this opening up is ac accelerating. So I think the domestic market of China is offering of for multinational a tremendous opportunity of growth, but also contributing as, as well to the growth of the other part of the world, because there is a lot of co-creation innovation that we do in China that also <laughs> we launch them in many places in the world. Do you have any hope at all that maybe tariffs might be reduced after the election, that this is something we can look forward to? Yeah, I mean, a big part of our brands are still uh, uh, European brands, and of course we have also a lot of production here in China, but I think more uh, we have... Uh, helps and ease, you know, in terms of doing business, and it will benefit all, you know. I think uh, we're all sharing one planet, and I think what is important is the solidarity, you know, between all uh, uh, countries uh, to uh, build a brighter future for uh, the generation to come.